everyone, I'm your host, PenzyFan19, and welcome to the December 2020 Pensy Fan Periodical. This is the monthly news series which covers most of the major rarity headlines from around the world, as well as my opinions on them. We have a lot of articles to go over today, so with that in mind, let's get rolling. First off, we have a vaccine! After almost a year of development, Pfizer and Moderna have finally released their vaccines after being approved by the FDA with Great Britain being the first nation to distribute the Pfizer vaccine, followed by the U.S. almost two weeks later. Although the vaccines will be distributed in phases, and with most of the general public likely receiving the vaccine by April 2021, it's still good to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that life can return to normalcy soon. And this also means that I can gain back some of my sanity! Other than that, SEPTA is carrying on with their King of Prussia expansion for the Norristown High Speed Line, which is somewhat unexpected considering the financial stress the Commuter Railroad has been facing. Former Democratic rival Pete Buttigieg has been nominated Secretary of Transportation. Moulton has introduced a bill for high-speed rail in the U.S. Cumberland and Salt K36 number 489 has been converted into an oil-fired locomotive. CD Pesa links have been repainted into the Dubise livery instead of their original CD colors. Tachi used to convert a Class 802 with a battery and make it a Trimo EMU. Well, SJ Norwich has received by mode sound of flirts. Paris Metro opened their Line 14 on December 14th. Metrolink Bombardier coaches are being refurbished by Talco. India is to test a hydrogen powered train set. TMH is to automize the Kazan Metro. CFL 3000 series locomotives are for sale. And Amtrak has completed a $16 million project of adding a third track for 1.5 miles of track between Wilmington and Newark which, according to Google Maps, likely already existed for some time. How about four tracks between Wilmington and Landover? Meanwhile, Vancouver is to order new Skylink trams from Bombardier, the same company who just completed the first three Zephyro train sets for fast traffic. Main 470 has acquired a Boston and Main GP9 from the Herbert Valley Railroad. Both slow G2000s have been repainted into the HSL Netherlands livery. LWC has leased Euroduels with the Amtrak Pointless Arrow. Newegg has released BMUs for the West Pomeranian Boyville ship. Tag E. Bergeslagen has ordered Siemens Dusto units. And Bombardier is to renovate the interior of S Bond ETR 463s. Not a fan of this portion of the interior, but the rest looks okay. Now, here's some interesting news DB Cargo has successfully tested a Class 67 with hydro treated vegetable oil as fuel. SNCF 427085 has been tested as a semi-autonomous locomotive. Metrolink has placed seven F-59 PHs for sale on the Ozark Mountain Rail Car as shells, while keeping some of them as switchers. NCDOT is placing Ringling Brothers Circus Cars for sale. A report recommends merging Mark and Virginia Railways Express. A Canadian firm is developing a system that's half light rail and half bus. A historical society has placed a Pennsylvania Railroad Keystone on the St. David Station. Amtrak P-42s have been pushing ACS-64s along the Northeast Corridor during intense snowstorms. Tampa is to receive brand new LRVs to replace their semi-historical streetcar replicas. A BNSF freight passing by Fort Madison, Iowa has been spotted with only three flatbeds. A CP Jeevo, likely 8894, is missing its lettering on its side. Fit Roads are investing in an autonomous trucking company. The NTSB is considering having at least five buffer cars between locomotives and oil tankers. Fortune and Uruguay is to receive Stadler Euro 4001s. Polo Regio has armed Polish World War II Commander Henrik Dobrzenski with a commemorative livery on a PESA link, while SETG has commemorated 193736 to Marco Polo. KFC has released their gaming console which warms chicken, and there is talk of for hydrogen powered trains in Canada specifically with Canadian National and Canadian Pacific, with CP officially announcing development of a hydrogen-powered road locomotive. Even though exact details have not been discussed yet, this hydrogen locomotive could either be a hydrogen-powered switcher, similar to what BNSF introduced in 2008, ironically this locomotive was intended for CP rail, or a mainline freight locomotive, or basically a hydrogen-powered Jeeva. I have a feeling it might be the latter too. But alas, we have the sad news. CN is to sell the Algoma Central Railway, although there may be some potential buyers. Progress Rail is to close their Tacoma, Washington shops, the same shops which produce CNG Heritage Units 7600 and 7601. Newcastle Coal Mine denied an application and could leave steam locomotives in Britain out of coal by 2022. 
NS has temporarily withdrawn their DGZ EMUs to investigate vibrations. The Orangeville Brampton Railway is to be abandoned. Coaster has officially retired their F-40s that they've been replaced by Siemens Chargers. And Jim Carrey will no longer be playing Joe Biden on Saturday Night Live. Now here's the follow-up news section for articles covering stories from previous episodes. Awesome has now joined the U.S. High Speed Rail Association. Metro has released a second Pullman Gallery bike car. Moynihan Train Hall opened two days ahead of schedule. CNL 1309 moved under its own steam. MBTA placed their CRRC subway cars into service on the red line. The Avelia Liberty has only reached 166 miles per hour at the Colorado Testing Facility instead of its design top speed of 220. And New Jersey Transit has successfully implemented PTC throughout their whole system. Up next is the station upgrades portion for proposals, construction, and opening to stations around the world. For this episode, we have Stoke on Trend, Tito Home and New Hills Newton, Perry Bar, Palmdale, California, South London, Godstruck, East Linton and Reston, Perth, and Newark Penn Station. In other news, an Ontario Northland caboose has been preserved. Finland Northern Railway has acquired a Class 144. 15 more proposals have been submitted for railway restorations in Great Britain. Miami Metro is to order new train sets. Collège Mazowiecki has ordered more saddle clerks, which look a bit plain when compared to the rest of the Polish commuter railway's roster. Berlin Uman has opened their U5 extension. SNCB is to order M7 bi-level coaches. Three Alcos have been gathered for a photo session at Greenwich Junction, New York to raise funds for an Alco S2 plant switcher number 5. Liner Lock Alban and Cargo is now WLC. Shoreline East is testing Kawasaki m 8 Sound Transit is testing their Siemens S700 LRVs. Tri-Rail is testing their newly rebuilt F40s. And Great Britain has a Class 43 Heritage Unit. As 43055 and 43046 have been repainted into the Midland Pullman livery. On a side note, happy anniversary to Trinity Railway Express, and happy one year anniversary to my first post on Railroad.net, my first account on social media. After all that, it is now time for this month's Meme of the Month. This month's Meme of the Month is Nickel Plate Road 759. And now, after much consideration for the title, the top story of the December 2020 Pensy Fan Periodical is MTA Purchases Dual Mode Siemens Chargers. As the finalization of a joint order started in 2018, Metro North is the first to secure 27 dual mode locomotives based on the Siemens Charger, even though no sketch of them exists yet, for initial service on the Hudson Line. There is also an option for an additional 144 chargers divided among four agencies. Another 32 for Metro North along with the existing 27 on order, up to 66 for the Long Island Railroad, up to 20 for CDOT, likely the New Haven Line, and up to 26 for NYDOT, the Empire Corridor. In my opinion, I'm not surprised by this purchase, as the Chargers have already proven themselves worthy of commuter service. That and Siemens was the only company offering to make dual mode locomotives for the US. However, the only confirmed order thus far for dual modes is for Metro North to replace their aging P32s on the Hudson Line. So this leaves a very important question for one of the roads listed in this joint order. Is this the end for the DE and DM30AC? Although the MTA has not confirmed that the dual mode chargers will replace their existing diesel fleet, it would still take some time for the chargers to arrive on Long Island. I believe the first LIRR chargers would arrive in 2025 take about two to three years to fully replace the DEs and DMs, so I would say that the DEs and DMs have about seven to ten years left on the island. As much as I love to rail fan these diesels as I grew up with them, it would make sense for the LIRR to replace them with chargers since the existing diesel fleet has been a maintenance nightmare for crew members. Now what would be a complete surprise is if the LIRR breaks away from the joint order and orders another dual mode locomotive of some sort instead of the chargers. Similar to when the LIRR chose the DEM30AC instead of the joint P32 order with Metro North and NYDOT. But at this point, it seems that the charges are inevitable and will likely invade your local commuter train route along with the MP Express coming soon. With our world domination, hopefully these dual mode charges prove themselves worthy in reliability and efficiency on the routes which they will be entering service on and are good to rail fan. Thank you everyone for watching this month's episode of the Pensy Fan Periodical. There have been a lot of real news headlines for the month, 
and it will be very interesting to see what the future has in store for all of these articles. Thank you again for watching and don't forget that questions for my upcoming Q&A video are due on January 15th and must be asked in the official Q&A announcement video. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Have a good day.